Let's talk about algorithms, machine learning methods and models, and how we conceptualize the different types of approaches and algorithms that we might use to solve AI, machine learning, and data science related problems. And it's helpful for me to think about it in a couple of different categories. Here we have supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement learning, and self-supervised. The traditional AI methods that have been around for a while, these are supervised and unsupervised methods. And the way I like to think about this is the absence or the availability of labels here. So in a supervised instance, we have a good sense of what is right or what is wrong. That's called a label. Or we have a good classification of the thing that we're trying to predict on. So if you have a uh, hundred images, you know what each one of those images is. One might be a dog, one might be a person, a car, et cetera, et cetera. And in my experience and in, in, in the projects that I've worked on, I've seen this play out when it, when, it, when it comes to trying to predict failures for heavy machinery. So we have a good instance of when these failures have happened in the data. And then we can look at the, the, the data leading up to those events and say, okay, there's some, some, some patterns here and then we have a failure. There's some patterns here that we have a failure. These would be considered my labels. These are the events that I want to predict. These are the bad things that I wanted to know, but I have these labels. All things being equal, generally you want labels. Labels are easy for algorithms to map for. They can look for patterns in this data and look for these events and they can give you a good mapping. Unfortunately, oftentimes we don't have those labels. So what I've gone in and, 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 and have tried to do failure prediction for certain models, but they just don't have a history of failures or events that they can map to. In those instances, I would resort to unsupervised learning methods. In, this, in these techniques, I'm not necessarily looking for distinct events that have happened. I'm looking for abnormal behavior in the data. So if the data is always going in, in it's, it's, it's always sort of happening in, in, in this manner, and then you see some kind of weird thing happen here, then you might say, this is abnormal. This is not typical to what we would expect this data to look like. And this would be an anomaly. So no labels, you're just looking for distinct patterns in the data. In this case, this would classify as an unsupervised learning methods. You have other methods here like clustering where you're trying to group different things in distinctive ways. And so these two methods, supervised learning methods, unsupervised learning methods, these are, these are, these are thought of as traditional AI methods. And these have been around for a while, very popular, and you always are going to cover this in any data science course. The newer stuff, the more sophisticated stuff is over here towards this end. I think you can see that. Let me shift over here. It's over here. With, with areas like reinforcement learning. So in these instances, we're giving an algorithm very complex, complex environments and we're asking it to take actions and try to maximize a particular reward. So here, I think it's best to think of an example. So Tesla's autopilot, the uh, deep learning algorithm is taking in all the inputs from the camera and getting a sense of what is a good driving experience, what is a safe driving experience and learning off of that and trying to optimize the reward. There's action and then there's a reward. And again, here, I think of Tesla's autopilot, DeepMind had AlphaGo, which beat some of the top Go players in the world. And they're also playing some pretty sophisticated online strategy games as well. And that's the world of reinforcement learning. And this has been popular for, I'd say, roughly 10 years or so. Really, DeepMind and AlphaGo really put this on the map. But in the last year, we've had a lot of interest in the category of self-supervised learning, which is over here. And now we're starting to get into the world of Gen AI. So <clears throat> self-supervised related to supervised as well. And in this particular method, there is an interesting technique here called masking. 
And essentially what we do is we feed a large corpus of text into an algorithm and we ask it to mask one of the words and then try to guess what that word is and then grade itself. The nice thing about this is that you don't have to manually go in and add the labels. The algorithm is kind of doing that on its own. And the best example of this is going to be in Chad GPT. So I'm not sure if you can see this here, but let me just write it here. I'll say Chat GPT. This is the end experience. I hope you've had an opportunity to play with Chat GPT, but a great AI assistant. But before you get Chat GPT, you start off with a large language model, a base large language model, which essentially is really good at predicting the next word. And then there's some other things that have to happen for you to get the Chat GPT, so, uh, such as fine tuning and some other techniques. But you start off with a giant large language model that is really good at predicting the next word. And this is a function of a self-supervised machine learning algorithm that is able to go over a large number of, uh, of text or corpus and then come up with that base model that we have right here. So this has been getting a lot of attention in part because it allows us to do a lot more sophisticated type of machine learning machine learning training without the tedious work of manually labeling all that data, which can be very cumbersome and very consuming and, and very time consuming. So as I think about the, the lay of the land in terms of machine learning algorithms and different techniques, this is how I'm looking at it. And again, just to recap, we have traditional AI methods, supervised learning, unsupervised learning. Here we have labels. We don't have any labels. Here, we're looking to predict certain things. We're forecasting here. We're looking for patterns. We're looking for anomalies. We're looking for clusters. We also have machine learning algorithms for very complex areas that require some appreciation of state in th that arena and also some actions. Think of Tesla's Alf autopilot system, AlphaGo from DeepMind. And then we also now have the Gen AI world of machine learning algorithms, in particular self-supervised methods that are allowing us to train on large corpuses of data and allowing us to, 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 to do things like chat GPT, in particular in building out large language models, the base models. So I hope that's helpful. <laughs> and if you have any comments, any questions, please drop them below. If I missed anything, if you're a practitioner, please also mention that below in the comments as well. Thank you and talk to you soon.